Los Angeles and Mexico City. Los Angeles and Mexico City. By 1970, there will probably be a million Negroes in this city. And I know that people are concerned about this. They may not talk about it very often, but I certainly heard them shudder in church when he said there would be a million Negroes in Los Angeles. We shudder because we're saying, in essence, the majority of these people are not like we are. And uh, we felt that we, maybe some of us felt we left this out because we were getting away from this problem. We are a part of this exodus, too. But we are a little, maybe embarrassed by the fact that here we're going to have a, a mass element come in that, that's going to create a tremendous social problem in the community to which we find uh, a great deal of difficulty in relating to. Well, I don't want to sound like a do-gooder, <laughs> because I really am not, and I'm somewhat of a snob. But I just think that with these people coming in who are not our intellectual equals, nor are they of our social sociological uh, bracket, uh, they're not to be a handicap to us. They'll find their own level. Now, it does sound like a snob, but I don't mean it this way. But they're used to living a certain way, and they, too, might uh, rise, up, uh, rise up above their origin and might one day be our associates. The whole tone of this meeting is that uh, we're setting ourselves up as little puppet Jesuses. We can't help anyone else until we help ourselves. The Negro has had two professions, his own medicine, dentistry, uh, law, or psychiatry, and he's had the profession of being a Negro. And many of us have come out here to escape from this second profession of being a Negro. And we are out here a while, and we're working in our own field, and then we find out that here are these same problems are falling on the heels of 1,600 Negroes a month they come into Los Angeles. Now, this gives us problems. It's our own view. It's our own identifying with these Negroes that are coming in with their carpet bags that causes us problems. This is our basic embarrassment that we as Negroes have. We want to live together, yet we want to sort of scatter to the far winds and live amongst uh, white people. We, we, we are brought up in terms of this, that to have a dark skin, to have to be a Negro, there is something wrong with it. And if you take a child and raise him, a, a, a child, a very impressionable child, and have him grow up in an atmosphere where your color of skin is something that is looked down upon, that there is something wrong with you, that you are 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 are, are, are not, you, you don't have the abilities of other people. Even no matter how much education, no matter how much uh, training, etc., you have, a lot of these impressions stay with you. I feel that we have to search for a new image. When I wake up in the morning, I don't look in the mirror and say, you are a Negro, therefore you will face life in a certain way. I see myself as a person, just like all the people that I work with and the children that I deal with, and they're all people. I've got to break in here. Yeah. This, <laughs> idea, I've this idea of this consciousness, of you've got to look in the mirror to face yourself to, to go through this bit about being a Negro, is very naive. The uh, individual, this concept was instilled in you before you could think. Right. Oh, I don't agree you see. You. And first of all, we have, as a symbol in our community, the white, straight hair, brown hair, as the symbol of the things we strive for. Now, there's nothing wrong with it, except that it represents the very fact that we are talking about. The idea, the Negro in our society is a rejected child. There's no two ways about it. It's in Los Angeles, it's in New York City, it's in any place in the United States.